finished drinking. Maybe he hasn't. He's got a lovely set of tusks. They're asymmetrical, David, which of course is, uh, I suppose for a modern person like you, must be quite appealing. What grief did you see that? <laughs> it's like the, the Egyptian goose came flying past, suddenly saw the elephant and then stuck its feet out as if it was going to have an accident. Of course, you can now hear completely that real sort of change in the sound and atmosphere of the bush as we go towards the midday. Well, not midday, really, mid-morning. As we start to contemplate the joys of Amanda's breakfast. Of course, today is Wednesday, which means it's shopping trip, which means it's not going to be a lot to eat today, David. Just quickly, before we follow the elephant, uh, there's some hippo. You see them there, Dave? Very nice. They aren't really hippo, of course, everyone. They are terrapins. Sometimes confused with hippo. Now, let us, he's, I'm just going to carry on. He seems to be coming across the front of the damn wall, which is very nice. I'll put the hat on straight because the side of my face is no longer exposed to the sun. There we are. Get out of my way, you out of your way. Good morning. Ah, he's a very lovely bull. He's probably about 25 years old, I'd say. Just having a nice morning drink. And now he's having some delicious leaves for breakfast. David, that could well be what we're going to eat for breakfast today. You've seen the parlous state of our pantry. <laughs> now, while you're not interested in the vagaries of our shopping order, everybody, I will tell you that the person responsible for the shopping order last week <laughs> ordered a quite astonishing amount of bacon. Not much else. Oh, OK. Hang on a second. This is quite interesting. Let me sit up and stop talking about the shopping order. I'm not very worried about this chap because he's not very old. He's a youngster, so I think he's just showing us that he's a big and tough fellow, especially with his rapier tusks. He's got a nasty cut in his foot, hey? Oh, and there. He's been stabbed. Well, if this was a very large must bull, I would be tempted to try and back off, but oh, he's a youngster, so he's not, I'm not too worried about him. He's also kicked his back right foot, he's kicked against a stone or something, he's stubbed his toe. Uh, stubbing my toes makes me very angry. Shame, so he's obviously had a bit of conflict, either with another bull, well, quite possibly he was in a herd causing trouble and one of the cows thought this is no good and gave him a bit of a push. But his tusks are very cow-like. He's got very um, thin tusks. And I don't know if that represents any kind of hormonal difference from the big thick tusked bulls. But if you saw just what you're looking at now, you'd be tempted to say that's a cow straight off because the, the cows have, tend to have straighter and thinner tusks. And this guy has got a very thin, straight tusk. He doesn't look very comfortable or very happy. So maybe he's feeling a little bit lonely. I wish we understood the social 
dynamics of elephants a bit better. I wish we understood how their emotions work because they certainly seem to be emotional creatures. He's got a small flatulence issue, but that's okay. Anybody who eats, or any animal that eats that amount of vegetation is going to have that issue, because they do, of course, have an enormous amount of bacteria in their guts, which in turn produce an enormous amount of gas. So he'll just have to lurk around on his own. He's also not looking in the best of condition. His bones are sticking out a little bit. And that's not ideal, especially at this time of the year. I mean, he should be in tip-top shape after a good rainy season with lots of good stuff to eat. And interestingly, he's not grazing at all. He's only browsing right now. He's eating Zizifus, which tends to be a, a great elephant favourite, the buffalo thorn. Hmm. Hello, Violet. You say, do elephants get tusk cavities? They don't get cavities, no. I mean, they don't... Those that, you know, they, they tend to stay off the toffees and off the Coca-Cola. And so what tends to happen is that they avoid getting cavities, which of course are caused in us by foods we were never designed to eat. But, Violet, they can get abscesses. So the nerve can die inside the tooth there. I mean, and in us that's often caused by a cavity, but I think it, in them probably caused by some other form of infection that's come in via the mouth. And then it can be very painful and eventually the tusk will fall out but they can be very very nasty when they have that is sort of experience where they have uh, you know they they get these dreadful well they get dreadful pain and then they become quite nasty they become quite uh, I hate to use the term aggressive but they can become aggressive because of the pain Hello, Riti. Of course, the, the most uh, qu clear question, I guess, about them is the one you've asked about whether or not the tusks, or why they have the tusks. What is the point of having tusks on the front of your face like that? Well, as with horns, they are there for defense to some extent, but they're also very, very useful for feeding. And he will use those tusks, and you can see that he's... I mean, I'm not sure why his right one is so much shorter than his left. I suspect it could be because he uses it more. But he will use it to scrape and chip away at bark in trees. He'll use it to wedge branches between his trunk and his tusks so that he can break them more effectively, more easily. And he will use them to uh, dig up roots and that sort of thing. So largely for feeding, Riti, although they can, of course, be used for defense. But I think if their principal purpose was defense, I think you'd find that they were the same on all elephants in the same way that they are the same or very similar in most antelope species. Not most antelope species, but antelope within a species.